The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Good morning. I'm here. With John Leonetti. That broadcast school has really paid off. Deacon Mark Campbell. Yeah! Mark Amadeo. Ooh, yeah! And Deacon Tony Valdez. Good morning, everyone. John Leonetti here on the Catholic Morning Show. Appreciate you being a part of it today. It's Tuesday, July 23rd. Welcome into One and All. We've got a great show in store for you today coming up just around the corner. I saw this just this morning. We're going to sneak it in. Some easy tips for sharing your Catholic faith more effectively with others. We'll uh, talk about that. I thought the first one was really good as well. And when it comes to misrepresenting Christ and his church, uh, this can be big. And, and there's ways around it. And sometimes our ego or pride can get in the way, especially in evangelization. We want to look a certain way. So we'll... Uh, We'll talk about that coming up just around the corner. Uh, also on the show today, we're going to talk about the Centurion program that was started here in this diocese of Des Moines. Um, it is Legatus Centurion, Empowering Leaders for Christ. Um, we're going to have a guest on to talk all about it today. His name's uh, Barnes Kelly, and uh, he's a Centurion member. I think he went through Centurion, and so he's going to be on to talk about uh, this upcoming session and uh, see if maybe one or two of you, I think I don't think they have a lot of spots left. So maybe one or two spots left uh, are interested, but we're going to really promote what this has done. I was in the first class of this and uh, thought it was really well done. And I see a lot has changed already. So uh, we'll talk to uh, Barnes about that coming up at about 745 today. Also today in the first half hour, uh, we're going to talk about what Monsignor James Shea has called the new religion of our culture, a new religion within our culture. Uh, He gave a talk at the Eucharistic Congress all about it, and he has spoken about this before, and uh, it was just really good. And I I think it's a great reminder of who we are and where our focus always needs to be. We'll uh, talk about that coming up at about 7.15 today. So we've got a lot to discuss over the course of this entire hour here on the Catholic Morning Show. Deacon Tony, let's pray. God, our Father, we offer you our day. We offer you all our thoughts, words, joys, and sufferings in union with the heart of Jesus. Holy Spirit, be our guide and strength today so that we may witness to your love. Mary, Mother of Jesus in the Church, pray for us. St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, protect us. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Deacon Mark now with your news. Thank you, John. News this morning brought to you by Intervisions Healthcare. Learn more at IVHcare.org. The Iowa Supreme Court has denied a rehearsing request by Planned Parenthood of the Heartland on Iowa's law banning most abortions as early as six weeks of pregnancy. The law signed by Governor Kim Reynolds in 2023 could ban abortions after embryonic cardiac activity is detected. Planned Parenthood estimates that up to 90% of abortions currently performed in Iowa would be banned under the law. The injunction blocking enforcement of the law is expected to be lifted soon, but there may be a delay before the measure goes into effect. Abortion remains legal in Iowa up to 20 weeks of pregnancy until the injunction is lifted. The southwest side of Belle Plaine is under a boil advisory. The advisory is due to repairs of a water main break that occurred on July 17th. The city water department is conducting water sampling per DNR regulations and will provide updates as they become available. Test results from the lab may take several days to return. Vice President Kamala Harris campaign raked in $81 million in the first 24 hours of her announcing she's seeking the Democratic nomination for president following President Biden's decision to drop his reelection bid. Not only is she bringing in the cash, she's now secured enough delegates to receive the official nomination. The news came just hours after Harris held her first on-camera campaign event in Delaware, where she told crowds she's ready to take on Donald Trump. And NBA legend LeBron James will be the Team USA flag bearer at the opening ceremony of the Summer Olympics Friday in Paris. He was nominated for the role by fellow NBA great Steph Curry. James will be the first men's basketball player to carry the flag. Team USA's female flag bearer will be announced today. For more sports, let's go now to Mark Amadeo. In sports on your Tuesday morning, yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard, all the Midwest Major League Baseball teams were in action on Monday. In the National League, in Chicago, the Cubs pick up a win as they defeated the first-place Milwaukee Brewers by the score of 3-1 to at Wrigley Field. While in Pittsburgh, the Pirates defeated the St. Louis Cardinals by the score of 2-1. to In the American League, in Texas, the Texas Rangers defeated the Chicago White Sox by the score of 4-3 to in 10 innings. 
And in interleague play, in Kansas City, the Royals defeated the Arizona Diamondbacks by the score of 10 to 4. And in Minneapolis, the Twins defeated the Philadelphia Phillies by the score of 7 to 2. Triple-A baseball, the Iowa Cubs opening up a six-game homestand tonight at Principal Park in downtown Des Moines as they will host the Indianapolis Indians, the Triple-A affiliate of the Pittsburgh Pirates. First pitch tonight at 6.30. And tonight, the high school boys' state baseball tournament gets underway in the first round from Cedar Rapids at Veterans Stadium, home of the Cedar Rapids Colonels. Seventh seed Dowling Catholic with a record of 23 and 15 takes on number two seed Dallas Center Drives with a record of 35 and 3. First pitch tonight at 5 o'clock in Cedar Rapids. Join Joe Stacy and I with the call here on most of these Iowa Catholic radio network stations for Dowling Catholic, their fourth straight appearance in the Class 4A state baseball tournament and their 23rd state tournament appearance overall in program history. The Maroons come in winning 11 of their last 12 games, including three in a row, and Dallas Center Grimes coming in winning eight of their last 10 games and two in a row. Join us for all the action again tonight, 5 o'clock in Cedar Rapids. And with your Tuesday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And let's go to Brady now for a look at today's weather. Thanks, Deacon Mark. Good morning, everyone. Weather today is brought to you by Knights of Columbus, Borman, and Pfeiffer Agencies. You can learn more at kfc.org. For today, looking at mostly sunny skies, a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Highs near 86 degrees. For tonight, partly cloudy conditions, low around 67. And then moving into your your midweek Wednesday, 20% chance of showers and mostly sunny skies. High around 87 degrees by Wednesday. Currently in Des Moines, 67, Ames and Marshalltown, 65, and Fairfield, 64 degrees. That's your forecast on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Back to you, John. Thank you, Brady. All right, friends. You try to evangelize. I try to evangelize, right? We hear different tips, tricks. We hear talks. We hear people that are kind of uh, urging us on saying, you got to evangelize. There's a lot of uh, courses out there for it. Then, you know. We uh, we get in the situations, and I don't know about you, but maybe you you once in a while clammed up, or you're embarrassed because you don't know the answer to something. Maybe you maybe they kind of throw you back off guard. Maybe you're just not prepared. Um, there there there's a whole kind of slew of things that can happen, especially in the moment when it comes to us really just wanting to share our faith. Uh, and and I think sometimes, and we've kind of talked, touched on this before, evangelization can kind of sound really intimidating. So you hear that and you think, oh, well, that's my priest's job. But it's not, as we know, Jesus calls every single one of us to go out to all the world, he says, to go out and make disciples, go out and, and, and live this kind of life. And when you, when you look back on the lives of the saints, um, you see that's exactly what they did. I mean, that that was discipleship, Right. The buzzword today is discipleship. We see it in in sanctity. And there's many others as well. It's not just the canonized saints, but we've seen many others uh, demonstrate this. I know people living right now that are demonstrating this on a regular basis. So there was an episode uh, on the Catholic gentleman that was um, done, and they drew from five different kind of ways uh, of of sharing your faith with others. Easy ways. You ready for these, Deacon Mark? I'm on the edge of my seat Good. if I was sitting down. Good. Number one, I like this one the best, actually, uh, and that is avoid misrepresenting Christ and his church. They say, quote, learn to embrace humility and kindness in evangelization. Knowledge puffs up our pride, but charity builds up. Um, one of them said arguments and belligerence can repel rather than attract. Instead, represent Christ with patience and love. Mm. I, you see, that's not easy for me. Uh, it hasn't been in, in different, uh, you know, instances and cases. Now I I've gotten better at it, but you know, sometimes my passion has gotten in the way and maybe it has you too. Maybe it's someone you really trust someone that trusts you, right? Family members or, uh, you know, that Thanksgiving table or something like that. But this is really good advice. I think for every one of us, and that is take a deep breath, right? Take a deep breath, realize that, that souls most of the time are not one or lost in a single argument, or a single debate, or a single conversation. Okay, sometimes light switches go on, and maybe there's steps after that, but realize that, number one. Number two, I think it's important, this is something I've always liked to remember, 
uh, as I've grown. And that is, remember, you're not Jesus. I'm not Jesus, right? I am, I am, Jesus is within me, right? And Jesus is helping me and Jesus is uh, by my side, all the, all the ways you think about it, but, but Jesus is Jesus. He is Lord and he is the one that brings salvation. He is the one that, that, that brings grace. And so sometimes when we and our emotions and, and all of that, and I get it, it's easy to fall into that, but sometimes we can get in the way. We get in our own way oftentimes of, um, of, of, of Jesus and of, of really kind of doing the good work of evangelization. I tell businesses, businesses this all the time when I'm working with them, you know, most, most business leaders, we just got to get out of our own way. Right. Just get out of the way, you know, and, and the way of your people or the way of this or that. And, you know, most of that is done because we've kind of tied little knots here and there. So I think it's good advice. First and foremost, take a deep breath. Remember that Jesus is the one that will bring this person to the faith. Not you. It's good, huh? I think it's real good. Yeah. Okay. The uh, you know, it, it says without being Mr. Agreeable and it's it, uh, it, it is it's the temptation oftentimes if we don't have the proper, if we don't feel like we have the proper response, is right. Just, this is number two. Oh, are we, are we still on number one? Yeah. Oh well, then I actually have some great thoughts on oh, that. Okay, I good. thought I heard you say number two in there. No, I haven't. And, yet. and I so I apologize. That's right. I was I was maybe looking ahead on the test, but uh, you know, at the uh, Congress, there was a, a variety of evangelization methods uh, observed, uh, even amongst our Catholic brothers and sisters. You know, with some in I would say inflammatory signage. Uh, you know. And uh, there was during the Eucharistic procession itself, there was a, a gentleman, uh, anti-Catholic gentleman with so the a, guy with the horn. With, out there yes, with a bullhorn. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, people would try to engage these individuals. And, you know, uh, as me being just an observer here, and it was very evident that in each one of these situations, those people were not interested in having a dialogue or a conversation. Just pray for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think those, those were perfect examples of, of uh, misrepresentation because if, 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 even if you do disagree with the church, whether it's on a, a teaching or, you know, the, the, the faith itself, the, the fundamentals of faith, you have to be willing to dialogue and, and stand firm in what you believe, not just hold up a sign or scream from a bullhorn with, uh, you know, no interest in conversing over what really is the, the is at the heart of the difference. Yeah. We just pray for him. And that's what, that's what I did. And I think it's important for all of us, you know, and don't, that's don't, why you're better than me. I just stood around yeah. and watched. Don't try to be the hero, <laughs> right? That's, that's the key. Don't try to be the hero in the faith. Again, Jesus is who we look to. It's all about Jesus, not about us. It's just a reminder of every one of us every day. All right. Here's number two, stand firm in truth without being Mr. Agreeable. Without being Mr. Agreeable, fear of conflict can lead to agreeing simply to keep the peace. This approach can dilute the truth of the gospel. And they say it's important to balance standing firm in compassion. Jesus says, he who is ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of him. Yeah. I mean, where, where there's disagreements, um, I, you know, I've always said, I, I just got to make clear, you know, that's something that I've, I've said before. Um, you know, this is not something that I believe. This is not something that my family or, or uh, me uh, ascribe to, you know, but blah, 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 blah. Right. So something uh, in that sense can be kind of uh, uh, not so. What would you say? I don't want to say intimidating, but may not seem so bombastic, bombastic, um, you know, sometimes just clear in the air. All right. Number three, engage others personally. This is good. Personal stories and experiences help you connect authentically with others. Uh, They mentioned that sometimes questions are far more potent than answers. Share your faith journey and listen to others to build genuine relationships. Yeah, ask a lot of questions. Ask a lot of questions. What what was your childhood like? What was your faith like uh, like growing up? I could tell you a lot about where someone's coming from, right? I mean, I've gotten into conversations with people before, numerous conversations, where I'm thinking, how in the world... Where did they come up with this kind of worldview? How did this shape? And then, you know, sometimes people have had a lot of struggles in their life or anything. And people have said the same thing about me. So, you know, one of the questions I recently posed to me, which yeah. I really appreciated. And uh, how's your walk with Jesus today? That's good. And it, it caused one to, because the, the tendency was we ask, how are you doing today? Fine. Right. You know, how's things going? Great. 
busy. You know, the, the, we can give these little trite, you know, incomplete answers. But it, when you're posed with the question, how's your walk with Jesus today? Uh, the, it, it's, it, it, it seems a little bit, um, I, I guess, un, undeserved. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good. Uh, no, tell me, how is, how, is your, how is your walk with Jesus good today? And, uh, and I think it, it really causes one to look at it. Where, where, is it, uh, where is it strong? Where is it weak? Where can I grow better? But then it also invites somebody to walk, uh, the, the opportunity to walk with somebody, mm-hmm. uh, especially when we share the, the struggles. I think you're right. Number four, this is all I have time for here. And I think this is the biggest fear for most people. And that is overcome the fear of not having all the answers, mm-hmm. right? It's okay to admit when you don't know something. Uh, there's numerous times people now will ask me a question and there's numerous times I say, I, I don't know. Let me try to find that out. And oftentimes I'll get a kick to the ego. Well, wait a second. Aren't you supposed to know that? Right. For that numerous times. That ties in with number two of being Mr. Agreeable. Yeah. I think sometimes that's where, again, we can just default to, well, you know, you have your truth and I have mine or let's agree to disagree, uh, you know, type of uh, response when it's just like, you know, that that. That it, this happens many times out at the state fair. You know, that is a great question. If you stop back the booth tomorrow, I, w- I promise you I will yeah. have an answer, right? Or if you want to leave me your email address, I will respond to this, th- this, uh, this question that you have. Thankfully, out at the booth at the Iowa State Fair, we have tons of materials that we can just hand them one of our uh, Catholic mm-hmm. Answers 20, 20 Answers book uh, to, um, to, to help, help them discover what they are looking for. Yeah, people appreciate that kind of humility, and that too. That goes to the uh, number five here. Invite yeah. others to participate. Yep. And it's uh, it, it's that 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 easy, you know. It's uh, oftentimes out at the fair, they want to people want to hand us their material. I experienced this at the National Eucharistic Congress as well. People wanting to, you know, and it, my response is, you, I'll take yours if you take one of mine, and uh, I'll read it if you promise to read this. I didn't read any of them. I I like to know. It's, it's like knowing what the other side is. What what tools they're using? No, I meant I meant all the stuff that I was getting. <laughs> Oh, at the Congress. Well, no, I haven't gone through it all like yet. But, folders. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm talking People like we're passing out oh, like we were, we were magazines. Getting, well, and, we were getting chick tracks and watchtowers. I mean, that and, was incredible. They, they had a ton of stuff but, at these uh, booths. Well, that's on the Catholic. I'm talking about outside the stadium. Oh, you're talking about the they, people they, that they are uh, th- those who don't agree with the Catholic faith. There oh. was uh, some of our, um, you know, you could say I've got I got an issue of the watchtower, some chick tracks. You didn't um, engage. Uh, no, I, oh. you know, I was not again, because my, my observation was that the, they weren't really interested in dialogue. Yeah. They were, uh, they, they, they had their, their, hey, their they were evangelizing. Points. They were, you know, hats off you to them. Give them. And they were outnumbered. It well, that's what I mean. Which I is, mean, you go which into, was impressive. Yeah. You go into uh, uh, a convention like that. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of courage there on their part. So, all right. Uh, Some simple ways to be able to evangelize. I think those are good. Keep those in your back pocket, friends. When we come back, we're going to talk about a talk that was given at the Eucharistic Congress about this new religion uh, that Monsignor James Shea is saying has embedded itself in our culture today. What is this new religion? And uh, are we maybe a part of it and not even knowing it? We'll uh, talk about that when we come back. John Linetti here on the Catholic Morning Show, friends. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Dino Storage, 2725 2nd Avenue in Des Moines, offering monthly rentals, indoor climate-controlled storage, and package delivery to your unit. Learn more at dinostorage.com. At Intervisions Healthcare, we see patients with unplanned pregnancies from ages 12 to 43. An unplanned pregnancy is traumatic at any age. For that reason, we specialize in educating, encouraging, and empowering vulnerable and at-risk mothers facing an unexpected pregnancy with the medical information and services necessary for them to make an informed decision. For more information on the free medical services at Intervisions Healthcare or to support our mission or become a volunteer, visit IVHcare.org. Confluence Brewing Company, a former home brewer's dream, is now a hub where great things come together. Situated south of Gray's Lake and easily accessible via the bike trail in Des Moines. Thank you, Confluence Brewing Company, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. St. Vincent de Paul, our sponsor, celebrates their 100th anniversary this year. Steve Havman, CEO of St. Vincent de Paul here, and what an incredible 100 years it's been, as we are now serving over 33,000 of your neighbors with food, clothes, workforce training, and reentry services. That's so many people, Dad. Does that include kids, too? Yes, Zoe, that includes kids, too. Please donate to our thrift stores and pantries. Donate, volunteer, shop. St. 
St. Vincent de Paul. Iowa Catholic Radio thanks St. Vincent de Paul for their support. Support for programming provided by Iowa Beef Steakhouse, a true Iowa steakhouse utilizing products and produce from across the state. Family owned and operated since 1982. Open for lunch Monday through Friday and dinner every night of the week. Learn more at iowabeefsteakhouse.com or on Facebook. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from independent realtor Chris Foster. Chris has served clients with everything real estate throughout Iowa since 2019. 641-891-8178 or online at the number 4 saleia.com. I got a fever, and the only prescription is free tickets to a grandstand concert at the Iowa State Fair. Join Iowa Catholic Radio for Fair Fever, August 8th through the 18th on the west side of the Ann and Bill Riley stage. We also have the opportunity for you to see Lauren Daigle with special guest blessing offer, Foreigner, the Abbott Brothers, and Kids Bob. Text FAIR to 515-223-1150 for your chance to win tickets. Learn more at iowastatefair.org. Iowa Catholic Radio will see you at the Iowa State Fair. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Here we are. You interrupted me and John. We were having a great conversation yes. here. Very good conversation, as always. Tuesday, July 23rd. All right. So if you were not at the Eucharistic Congress, that's just fine. There was a talk that was given by a man by the name of Monsignor James Shea. And uh, Monsignor Shea is uh, really kind of a rising star in um, in the the country, but in the church, he is the president of the University of Mary, and um, it, it, this university is just kind of taking off like crazy. Um, I'd love to sit down with this guy sometime. I really would. Just have a long interview with him, talk to him about his life and all of that. But he gave a talk, and he gave a talk about this what he calls new religion in our culture today. And he says, you know, in, in a lot of ways, kind of like what he would do, and it kind of mirrors what, what we see happening in our culture today, what he would do if he wanted to, uh, or if he was playing, let's say, playing the devil, right? Wanted to get people away from the Lord Jesus or keep them away from God in our culture today. Now, you may think, well, it doesn't sound very hard to do, and it's not, Right. It's not. But some of the the things that he said here were chilling, chilling, I thought. And and things that you kind of maybe almost maybe think of or you thought of, you know, maybe you can maybe you can relate to this here with me, friends. You think of something, but you're just not able to kind of put words to it. Right. Uh, When I was reading uh, uh, his talk and I I still want to see it, I think you can go to EWT and I know they they had stream the whole conference. Um, I think the talk is down here in church. Pop Actually, if you go, yeah. I think you go to yeah, uh, right the National YouTube. Eucharistic Congress website. Oh, think, there it is. I think they have yeah. all the videos up there of all awesome. the talks. And Awesome. And, I, um, and I'm going to sit down and listen to this whole thing, but I thought what he was saying, he was right on point, right? And so he s- says, what, what would this look like, right? What would it look like if he were the devil? He wanted to keep people away from God and create kind of a new religion today. He says, quote, Here's what he would do. What if there could be a religion that nobody thinks is a religion? What if you could take the good news and make it seem like terrible news? That was chilling to me when he just kind of brings out the first point of of kind of what what he would do, if you will, or what he kind of sees happening in our culture today. If he were the devil, if he was playing devil to keep people away from the Lord, what would he do? First thing. He'd create a new religion, but, but no one would think it's a religion, right? I, I'd create a new ideology in the world today that, that most people will ascribe to in some way, shape, or form. I think we know what that ideology is today. It's called relativism. It's uh, 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 the dictatorship, as Pope Benedict XVI says, a dictatorship in our culture today. Uh, getting that from John Paul II, Pope Francis has said during his pontificate that relativism is the most dangerous of all ideologies facing in our world today. So the past three popes, okay, the past three popes in the modern era have warned us that that this ideology, that truth is relative, that there's no such thing as absolute truth, that That you can believe whatever you want, you can live, you can do whatever you want, you can be fine, it's okay, and I can do whatever I want, live however I want, make whatever decisions I want. 
But any one of us knows that decisions that we make in this life aren't just isolated to ourselves, that they affect other people, right? I mean, anyone ever, you ever, you know, dealt with someone, you know, that has maybe substance abuse issue, right? You dealt with someone in your life. I think most people have dealt with someone in their life that's had some kind of self uh, uh, substance abuse issue, right? I mean, it's rampant. It's most people, even good, many good people, right? Struggle with this. I believe everybody's addicted to something. Yeah. Yeah. Something uh, has an unhealthy attachment to something. Yeah, mine has been Twitter the last few days, so I got to get away from that. <laughs> but you know what, what is that, right? No one that loves someone that may be struggling with something like that. No one go to no one that loves them goes to them and says, well, you do you. Right. You do whatever you want. No, I don't care. You're not hurting me. You know, you got a wife that maybe is struggling with something, a husband. Well, that's fine. You know, you, you kind of do you, you do what makes you happy. You know, no, because there's there's profound effects that that has ripples, if you will, in this ocean of my life that affect and bring lots of waves into people in my life that I know and love. Sin is not isolated. It is not something just in kind of a, uh, a you know, a, a corner of our lives. It permeates the culture, our, uh, not just ourselves. It has profound effects on the wider culture, right? The other thing he suggests here is taking the good news and making it terrible news. I, I, I don't know if that could be any more true and kind of what we're seeing happening today, right? This idea that Jesus is this following in our faith is drudgery. It's, um, Oh, you know, uh, uh, you're, I don't want to say mean, it's It's even worse, restrictive, but you're judgy, right? You, um, you, you just, you, you don't have an open mind, you know, all of these things, all these ways. And they're tempting. They're very tempting because most of the time we're battling this, this faith, uh, uh, in in a world that just will will not accept it, you know, and, and we'll say this is just a terrible. People will say it's a terrible way to live, um, you know. It, again, as Deacon Mark just said, restrictive. You're not you're not being free. All these sorts of things. So what would he do? Well, he he would convince the world. He says that the good news that Jesus Christ has come not to condemn the world but to save it to enter into every one of our lives, which is the purpose, meaning, reason to every single one of our lives is to be in relationship with God. That's what we were created for. But to turn that on its head, and the culture says, no, no, there's a better way. There's an easier way. There's a wider path, if you will, over here. He says, Monsignor Shea, what if I could borrow its mythic quality, its epic force from Christianity, so that it would seem like Christianity is boring and a new religion is exhilarating, right? Well, all, all these... Um, all of the, the, the lights, the glamour, right, to take out the pieces of um, Christianity and to kind of rename them, if you will. Right. So, you know, qualities of ours. You I, OK, here's a great example of this for me. All right. Fasting. This is this is our wheelhouse, man. <laughs> right. I mean, this our was, wheelhouse for failure. Well, yeah, well, that's <laughs> because but, that's something that Monsignor Shea talks about. Yeah, in I'm terrible here. at fasting. But what I mean by that is, is Jesus is the one that, that shows us here the importance, the value of it. And it's almost kind of like in our modern world today. You know, fasting is just kind of the new craze. Right. So you just kind of take things right from from the faith. And I see this and it's just kind of rebranded, if you will. Things that have happened in our life. Meditation is one of those two I've seen um, that, that can, you know, be very different. I'm not saying they, it always is, but, uh, you know, make sure that we're aligned. Meditation, you know, shouldn't be about me, right? That's not what the, the Catholic definition of meditation is. St. Therese of Lisieux says it's an orienting or a reaching or an ordering of myself to God. And that's what we want in meditation is to turn to God. Right. And allow him then to give us his graces. This is the way we define it as Christians. Right. And then he says, finally, what if there could be a religion like that that could cause and inspire and form the most fragile and unconfident people in the history of the world while making them also the most prideful people in the world has ever been? This is something I struggle with. You're going to struggle with. Every one of us is going to struggle with. Right. Um, and, And this is this can take it. Right. We can we can all kind of buy in. And this is a, I think this is something we all have to stand guard about in our own lives. We can all buy into ideologies and maybe not even know it. 
and then maybe just kind of puff our chests out a little bit and, you know, um, uh, get stubborn. You know, I've seen this, you know, I've told you I'm, I'm Catholic. My beliefs align with the Catholic faith, right? The Catholic faith's beliefs don't align with mine. I align with the Catholic faith. This is because I'm all in. This is my life, right? This is what I want. And this is what I saw the saints to be. And this is what I want to be all in on this. But it, it can be easy for me to kind of, you know, pick and choose or take things in the culture. You know, these aren't that bad. or That's not that bad. Right. And maybe even stand firm and maybe it's not leading me to Christ. And so we've all got to be on guard. Every one of us, you know, it can be very easy. Oh, vilify the culture, vilify the world, all that sort of thing again. But the problem is you and me. And to the extent that we're able to be able to live our faith the best way possible with the help of God's grace, that, that it's all God's grace to turn ourselves over. Then we see the world begin to change. But it's up to us. Right. It's up to us. Uh, Trez of Lisieux, Christ has no other hands and feet on earth except for ours. So really good talk. And you can also get a book, uh, The Religion of the Day. It's the follow up to his uh, From Christendom to Apostolic Mission uh, by Monsignor James Shea. Uh, the Religion of the Day is, is the new book. In fact, people that attended his talk got a fr- all got a free copy when they oh, uh, really? went into it at the, at the Congress. So yeah, should have gone. Uh, well, I know there were some people that already had the book and they have an extra. So if you know somebody that went, ask them if they went to the talk. See if they'll loan you the book. Cool. Well, Learn we... more about what uh, Monsignor James Shea had to say. All right. When we come back, Barnes Kelly, Centurion member at 745 today. Today, we're going to uh, talk more about the Legata Centurion program, and I know they're looking for one or two more that might be interested in this. We'll have all the information for you coming up here in the second half hour. All right. Don't go anywhere. Right now, let's go to our daily gospel and a reflection. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. While Jesus was speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers appeared outside wishing to speak with him. Someone told him, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside wishing to speak to you. But he said in reply to the one who told him, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my heavenly Father is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Father Nick Smith parochial vicar of Christ the King Parish in Des Moines. It is extraordinary that our God has willed to make us part of his family. And Jesus is speaking about who is his mother, his brothers, his sisters. The one who does the will of God can be part of the Lord's family. This is extraordinary that God, Almighty God, our Creator, has willed to make us, his creatures, part of his family. And yet that is our call. We can call God as Father, as we say in the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. Let us always remember this. Remember the great dignity that we have been given as sons and daughters of so great a, a Father who has joined us to his Son, who has joined us to the life of heaven, even while we remain here on earth. May God bless you, and let us continue praying for each other. Iowa Catholic Radio, connecting listeners to Christ every day with people like you. Hi, this is Erica Schaefer from St. Augustine's in Des Moines. Thanks for listening to Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarans strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop, priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsarah.org, join S-E-R-R-A dot org. Thank you, Sarans, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Westgate Dental, offering cosmetic, family, implant, and general dentistry. Located at 1073rd Street, Suite 1 in West Des Moines, just behind Dowling Catholic High School. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. 
Christ Our Life, a Catholic conference for our searching souls. Come celebrate your Catholic faith where lives are changed. World-class speakers. Adoration. Inspirational music. Holy Mass. Reconciliation. And so much more. A weekend of faith sharing, faith building, and praise. Christ Our Life, a Catholic conference for our searching souls. September 28th and 29th at the Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. Details and ticket info at ChristOurLifeIowa.com. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. All right, we've got a chance for you to win some awesome tickets at the Iowa State Fair. And uh, 8th to the 18th, I think, of the days. And if you would like to be a part of maybe one of the shows at the Grandstand, we've got lots of tickets, and there's some really good ones. So Deacon's going to quickly share the the tickets we have, and then I'm going to give you the directions on what to do to be able to enter in. Go ahead. That's right. Now, for the next uh, few weeks, it's hard to believe that we are we are within a month of the Iowa State Fair starting. But we've got tickets to Lauren Daigle, along with special guest blessing off. Uh, Ofer, and then uh, I don't know if it's Ofer or Offer. I need to figure that out if, so I don't keep butchering. I know Matt gets it right in the radio promo that we've been uh, already been running. Uh, Foreigner, the Avett Brothers, and Kids Bop. So we got right. uh, tickets to all of those shows. And so if people text the word FAIR, F A I R, to 515 223 1150, you'll be entered into a chance to win. And then uh, starting next, uh, late next week, we will begin drawing. We'll draw four winners a day over five days, and they'll get their choice of uh, they'll get 24 hours to decide which which show they want to see. And then, uh, yeah, we'll have the tickets for them here at the studio or to be picked up out at the Iowa State Fair. Um, we'll call window, but text the word 515-223-1150 to, uh, to, to have a chance to win. Text the word fair. Well, we also want to give away tickets to Christ Our Life. We, will, John. we, we, we did that now. Yesterday. Later. I know, but yesterday we had such a tremendous response to uh, our invitation, and we said so we got it. we've got more tickets to give away to the Christ Our Life conference. Yeah. That we want to do that tons, too. tons. But right now, uh, any time uh, throughout the days up until next week, five one five two two three eleven fifty fair. Just text that word in, and you will um, be entered in to win. All right, Deacon Tony, let's pray. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Deacon Mark now with your news. Thank you, John. Your Iowa Catholic Radio News this morning brought to you by Intervisions Healthcare. Learn more at ivhcare.org. The Des Moines City Council has advanced the proposal to ban sleeping or camping on public property. There will be a $50 fine for violators. The aim is to reduce the rising homelessness in Iowa. The ordinance also includes a provision for an appeals process and requirements for individuals to leave their encampment, potentially leading to arrests for noncompliance. The move comes after a recent U.S. Supreme Court ruling allowing cities to enforce such bans, sparking debate among residents and council members about the effect- effectiveness and humanity of the measures. The council will need to approve the ordinances two more times before they can be implemented. Delta Airlines says it will take another couple of days to recover from a global computer outage Friday. The airline has canceled more than 4,000 flights since Friday. CEO Ed Bastian said yesterday the company is working hard to get operations back to normal. In a memo, Delta said it's doing everything possible, including increasing incentive pay for pilots and flight attendants. And the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile will need some work after a crash on Monday in Illinois. The 23-foot iconic hot dog vehicle lost control on a Cook County highway yesterday morning, rolling over onto the side of a Hyundai. No one, thankfully, was injured. Let's go to Mark Amadeo now for a scoreboard update. In sports on your Tuesday morning, yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard, all the Midwest Major League Baseball teams were in action on Monday. In the National League, in Chicago, the Cubs pick up a win as they defeated the first-place Milwaukee Brewers by the score of 3-1 to one at Wrigley Field. While in Pittsburgh, the Pirates defeated the St. Louis Cardinals by the score of 2-1. to one. In the American League, in Texas, the Texas Rangers defeated the Chicago White Sox by the score of 4-3 to three in 10 innings. And in interleague play, in Kansas City, the Royals defeated the Arizona Diamondbacks by the score of 10-4. to And in Minneapolis, the Twins defeated the Philadelphia Phillies by the score of 7-2. to 
Triple A baseball, the Iowa Cubs opening up a six game homestand tonight at Principal Park in downtown Des Moines as they will host the Indianapolis Indians, the Triple A affiliate of the Pittsburgh Pirates. First pitch tonight at 6 30. And tonight, the high school boys state baseball tournament gets underway in the first round from Cedar Rapids at Veterans Stadium, home of the Cedar Rapids Colonels. Seventh seed Dowling Catholic with a record of 23 and 15 takes on number two seed Dallas Center Grinds with a record of 35 and 3. First pitch tonight at 5 o'clock in Cedar Rapids. Join Joe Stacy and I with the call here on most of these Iowa Catholic radio network stations. For Dowling Catholic, their fourth straight appearance in the Class 4A state baseball tournament and their 23rd state tournament appearance overall in program history. The Maroons come in winning 11 of their last 12 games, including three in a row. And Dallas Center Grimes coming in winning eight of their last 10 games and two in a row. Join us for all the action again tonight, 5 o'clock in Cedar Rapids. And with your Tuesday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And to the person who texted in, Lauren Daigle, nice try. you got to text in F- FAIR, F-A-I-R, to 515-223-1150 oh, to get uh, a chance to win. So that's, I was a stickler for details that's here, That's not Brady. fair. <laughs> 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 wow. I see what you did there. I heard what you did there, Brady. Nice work. All right. All right. Take what a, do you got for the weather? Let's take a look at it. Weather today is brought to you by Knights of Columbus, Borman, and Pfeiffer Agencies. You can learn more at kfc.org for today. Looking at mostly sunny skies, a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms. High around 86 degrees for today. Then tonight, partly cloudy conditions, low around 67. And for your Wednesday, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Mostly sunny skies and a high of 87 degrees on Wednesday. Currently in Des Moines, 67. Ames of Marshalltown, 66. And Fairfield, also at 67 degrees. That's your forecast on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Back to you, John. All right. All right, friends, a lot of you have already texted in the word fair. That's awesome. Many of you, you can still do so, 515-223-1150. When you text in the word fair to 515-223-1150, you are entered in to win tickets to many of the shows at the grandstand. So uh, you uh, entering into that drawing next week, you can text all day, tell your friends and family to do so as well. Let's go to your saint of the day. This is your Saint of the Day on Iowa Catholic Radio. Although she experienced mystical vision, she also was deeply tied to living out charity of heart in the world. St. Bridget of Sweden today was a courtier of King Magnus II of Sweden in the 14th century. She was the mother of eight children and spiritually adopted many more as she was frequently seen nursing the sick in Sweden, often with her children in tow. After her husband's death, Bridget persuaded the king to give her lands where she could build a monastery. The group that began there became known as the Brigentines. For a while, Bridget served as its abbess. In 1350, braving a plague rate in Europe, Bridget went on a pilgrimage to Rome. While in Rome, she was hounded by debts and by opposition to her work against church abuses. She also found time to help the sick and poor in Rome. She extended her pilgrimage to take her further to the Holy Land, but a shipwreck and the death of her son marred the experience. She died as a result, 1373. In 1999, she was named one of the three co-patronesses of all of Europe. We ask today, St. Bridget of Sweden, to pray for us. Amen. All right, when we come back, Barnes Kelly is going to be on, a Centurion member. We are going to talk about the Legata Centurion program. I've been through this. It, it, it was a treat. We'll have that for you when we come back. John Leonetti here on the Catholic Morning Show. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's Dr. David Anders with Call to Communion. It's a live call-in show for non-Catholics and fallen-away Catholics. Call to Communion on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, connecting listeners to Christ. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Gold Dome Buildings. Gold Dome is locally owned and operated, serving Des Moines and surrounding areas since 1992. Builders of garages, farm buildings, customized backyard sheds, and playhouses. GoldDomeIowa.com. 
Iowa Catholic Radio needs you. Whether it's assisting with events, answering the phone, being a parish ambassador, or simply a commitment to pray, Iowa Catholic Radio depends on you to help connect listeners to Christ. Email contact at iowacatholicradio.com to get involved. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Dino Storage, 2725 2nd Avenue in Des Moines, offering monthly rentals, indoor climate-controlled storage, and package delivery to your unit. Learn more at dinostorage.com. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. It is July 23rd, Tuesday. Tomorrow we'll be giving away more tickets to the Christ Our Life conference. So uh, be ready tomorrow. Get those fingers ready to text in. We will have uh, be giving away a couple tickets there to that great conference. All right, let's go to our next guest, Centurion member, Barnes Kelly. Hey, brother. John, how, how are you? Doing? I'm you doing? great. So you were a part of the last Centurion. Uh, I think, yeah, two, class. two years ago, maybe. Two years? Yep, okay. That was the second class. Let, let's first kind of um, uh, go way back here. Can you give us a little bit of background of what the whole Legata Centurion program is? For me, it was, I was going to church with my family, and Joe Teeling came up to me afterwards and invited me to be a Centurion, and I had no prior I mean, I knew Joe Teeling, but I didn't know Legatus or Centurion. But yeah. based on what he said, it sounded something that like that I needed. To That's do. what you wanted. Yep. And so, uh, w- take us through what what was this whole process like? It was uh, a meeting, I think, every three weeks uh, with a group of Cal- a group of Catholic uh, business people, and then there were a group of us mentees, or Centurion members, who were sort of younger. Um, Basically, people who are trying to do both practice their faith and, you know, try to figure out how, what they're trying to do with their business. I'll give you kind of the mission statement, too, friends. I think this is important um, of what the whole thing kind of is about. So they say the Catechetical Institute at Franciscan University of Steubenville has partnered with the Des Moines chapter of Legatus to assist in the development of disciples of Christ with an emphasis on personal and professional leadership. With this empowerment, centurions are more effective leaders for their lives, families, and the greater community. So it's a mentor program for Legatus members um, that are it, it put together businesses and that are running businesses to be able to help people in their professional leadership skills, uh, but also with the whole foundation of faith in yep. that too. Yeah, and that was one of the key things that I liked about it was because you can get a mentorship, you can find a mentorship you know, through a variety of ways. You can find one at work. The nice thing here was that it was they were really focused on both you, you know, your soul, your business, your family, and it was everything. So it, it wasn't compartmentalized. It wasn't just, hey, I want to be a mentor and mentee so you can, uh, you know, get a promotion. There were no promotions to be had. It mm-hmm. was just you, uh, very very nice group of people concerned about you and what you were up to. Deacon Mark's taking pictures over here. Hi. I thought. Hey, what's going on? Um, okay, so what did this do for you? I mean, when you kind of take a step back and look at this, what was it like? Well, the the big reminder for me was, so when you think about the church, that you, it's not just buildings, priests, teachers, or schools. It's like, it's people. And so this was a great group of people within the church that I found myself uh, getting to know better. Getting Have you stayed in better. contact? Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, my mentor was Joe Teeling. I don't know if anyone has ever met Joe we've Keeling. we've met him a few times so i don't know if i got the the short short end of the stick or i got the the, the, <laughs> the you know the a team but maybe it was because i needed um you know we needed it but it was he was a very nice you know to meet and you to get to meet somebody as a mentor you know you have to do a lot of background and so the first time i got together with joe we had coffee for three hours and nice. so we just kind of ex, kind of exchanging um stories about each you know Exchanging stories, and I think one um, just getting to know somebody at that level, mm-hmm. uh, is, especially someone who's in Legatus, is uh, a privilege. I'd and say. you you were able to kind of meet the other Legatus members too, right? I mean, there was dinner, yes. or two, or something like that. Tell us about that. Yeah, so there's I think there were about twelve of us, and um, you know we we'd all get together and and meet and kind of share our big. Um, Big issue that we were kind of face that we were facing. Uh, it was nice to know that there were other people. You know, we didn't all go to the same 
church or if we were from different parishes, but we're all kind of striving towards the same thing. So even just knowing that other people were striving towards the same thing as you were was comforting, but then yeah. also we could exchange ideas, swap ideas, uh, give each other advice or, you know, console if, if needed. So. Walk, walk us through a night. When you guys would get together, you said there were 17 in your class? Yeah, or 12, I think. 12, okay. So but, what did you do uh, when you guys would gather together? How would that look? What was the structure of the evening? Well, the the first first thing we would do is we'd, we'd gather and sort of and chit-chat and wait for everybody else to get there. I was sometimes late. Uh, <laughs> but I would get there. And then the, the nice thing is we'd start with prayer. You know, we would all pray and... Um, then someone would zoom in. At the, I think this was back, well, they're in Steubenville, so it was a couple of years ago, but someone would zoom in and sort of lead us through the readings. There was a book that they assigned called, oh, I can't think of the name of it, but it was one of those books where it was like, you need to plan your life, and this, these are the tools that you can use. And so we'd walk through that and break out into small groups, reflect on it, get back together, talk about it. And then uh, after that, one or two of us, we'd split back up again and They'd share the, sort of their big issue that they were facing, and then both the mentors and the other mentees would receive it and provide feedback. One of the things I remember about the Centurion program, um, and I think it's changed a little bit, you know, because we were kind of the pilot uh, group for them. But one of the things I really learned uh, was that they really want to push accountability, you know. I mean, I restructured a couple really, ma- well, one really major thing in my work life because of Centurion. I mean, I, I completely restructured something that I never thought would work. And I, I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday. We were just kind of upstairs with our small group because, you know, he kind of broke out uh, in the evening and they all pushed me. I mean, they just kept coming. And I had every excuse in the book. And I remember I went home that night and I told my wife, I said, I, I'm changing this part of, of this business. I'm, I'm completely changing it. And, um, I mean, she was very supportive, and I did, and it worked. It was incredible, it is. right? But yeah. the effects of that brought so much more time into my life, even with my own family, that, that I thought was really kind of a game changer. So when you say, like, programs like this can really kind of change lives, like, I mean that. I mean, there's aspects of my life that this was, because of this accountability, coaching, mentorship, was able to open for me. And I still stay in touch with my mentor. I'm sure you still stay in touch with Joe. Yep, I do. Yep. I still t- stay in touch with golf. Um, get coffee, you know, and, and he is, I, I ask him really, really big questions, you know, and he's very, been very successful in his business, but he's a man of faith. And that's what, that's what drives me. He could be very unsuccessful in his business, but he's a man of principles and faith and virtue. And that's what I want to emulate more than anything. And so when I'm making decisions, even in business or life, we want to do so with our best foot forward, right? Uh, grounded in kind of the virtues, God's grace and all of that. So what was the closing like? The closing was we would sort of share our experience in front of the Legatus chapter in in the summer, and so that was uh, another opportunity for public speaking, which mm-hmm. everyone <laughs> was, uh, you know, a variety You're of used to there. that, aren't you? Well, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes the I'm jokes... Talking to a big-time attorney here. <laughs> sometimes the jokes don't land, and in, and in person, uh, yeah. But yeah. I, it was... It was good. Wait, wait, do you have an experience of a joke not landing yes. at that? Oh, yeah. we'll, we'll give you a second shot right here. We're, we're no, gonna, here's don't. your chance to that redeem was, yourself. That was very random, Barnes. <laughs> and so I, I, I have to say you have experience in there. What are your not, jokes not you know, landing? The, I'm not the comedian in my family. That's, <laughs> I'm the lawyer. So dry, You're, dry arguments. That's right. Dry yeah, arguments. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing some really solid dry humor right well, now. That, 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 wow, this is good. Is that yeah. the way that works? Yes. Yeah. So uh, what, what would you say to someone maybe on the fence thinking about doing this because they have a couple spots open right now and uh, they will be closing those up before the august 28th meeting so i was a very fortuitous late ad um and so i think joe was joe was walking down to get to communion and out of the corner of his eye he probably saw me uh trying to discipline or grab and keep <laughs> keep one of my kids in well behave he's like oh i think barnes probably needs yeah. needs help or you know not Needs, this program would be good for him, but he was right. So I'm sure someone else, you know, someone's listening or knows someone who's like, this person needs uh, a mentor. They're not getting it from whatever a- avenues that they're pursuing right now, and they need a church-based yeah. mentor. So. 
I, I, I think there's a lot of people and that may be listening right now and thinking, um, I, I have a son or a daughter, grandson, granddaughter, niece or nephew, or maybe a, a work colleague that would be uh, really um, a fit for this. I think you got to be, what's the age cutoff, though? Do we know? I don't. There's not one? I don't think so. Oh, good. There okay. were wide, I mean, was there? 20s to 50s. Oh, okay, good. Our, our class was pretty young, so I didn't know if that was kind of, but that was kind of the whole pilot class. I was in, the, uh, I was in the third class. The, yeah. the, the and you're recent. old. So and that's, I, yeah, and, I, and yeah. I wasn't even the oldest one in our group. Wow. So, uh, I, I think there's, there, there's an opportunity for everybody here to, especially... Especially if you're somebody who is, again, working in the secular world, yep. right, and, and is trying to figure out that balance, right? Or, or how, do you, how, do you, how can you boldly live your faith, you know, in, in a secular society that is not always welcoming to, to, yep. uh, to, to what we believe and how, how we choose to live? And so there, there's an opportunity to grow both professionally and spiritually, which I think is a very unique, um, you know, opportunity for people that, that are interested. John, who should they uh, contact if they yes, are, are interested? you can contact Joe Teeling, jteeling2018 at gmail.com. Or you can call 515-202-2979. Or I'm going to give that information again. Uh, you can contact the man who has put together this whole thing, Joe Teeling at jteeling2018 at gmail.com or at 515-202-2972. If you want that information or more information on that, you can always text us. We'd be happy to respond to you at 515-223-1150. Or you can call us during regular hours at 9 o'clock today. We'll have people available to take your call at 515-223-1150 as well. Uh, if you would like more information on that. All right, Barnes, you're um, the man. Thank you. Good Appreciate job. It. Good job. Thank you. I want some more jokes out of you next time, though, I'll, all right? I'll prepare them in more right. uh, funnier material. They will land know. with me, I promise <laughs> you. I like a good dry <laughs> sense of humor. All right, uh, Deacon Tony, let's pray. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit come down upon all of us, protect us all from evil, and bring us all to his everlasting life. Amen. Amen. We've got an exciting week ahead, everybody. And remember, make sure to stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll be giving away more tickets to the Christ Our Life Conference. In addition, the fair is going to be coming up here soon. Lots of events will be uh, keeping you abreast to all of those as well. So I'm very excited about it, too. Deacon Mark, closing well, remarks? Yeah, on the show tomorrow, Deacon Eric Pugh will be in studio. And uh, he's going to be talking about an event coming up that uh, if you are somebody who has thought about the diaconate or um, you know want more information with the life uh, the day in the life of a deacon looks like there's a special event that's going to be coming up in August. And Deacon Eric Pugh will be on tomorrow's show to talk about it. All right. So we'll be back on live tomorrow at 7 o'clock. In the meantime, be confident in Christ's mercy and his love today.